What is going on, YouTube Nation? This is Dark David. And if you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So I was in a big uh, group chat and Twitter with some investors, business famous, hipster, uh, finance, and a few other people. Uh, Fabio is his name as well. And I mentioned to these guys about some monthly dividend stocks that I own. And I'm going to explain to you why I own some of these monthly dividend stocks. A lot of you guys have never heard of some of these stocks that I own. And I'm going to explain to you why I own these stocks. I'm going to do a dividend stock analysis. I'm going to explain to you why these certain type of stocks are in demand. I'm going to also explain to you um, how some of these stocks do against O. Some of them I consider a very strong rival to Realty Income. And I'm going to compare. I own one business development company, and I'm going to compare it to Prospect Capital and why I don't like Prospect Capital as well as AGNC. So I'm going to basically have a video on nine dividend stocks. So if you are new to this channel, again, make sure you subscribe. These videos are free for you guys. And again, smash that like button. The more likes, the more active you guys are in my channel, the, the more I'm going to post videos. And, you know, these are all free for you guys. So all you have to do is subscribe. I mean, who says no to that? A free dividend stock analysis video. And I reveal to you everything I own, my mistakes. I reveal to you uh, everything that uh, I do with my dividend portfolio. So welcome to my channel if you're new. Let's check these out right now. My first dividend stock that I own and I'm long on is LTC Properties. So this is a real estate investment trust that has not done well against the S&P in the past five years, but I'm going to show you why I own these guys. They have a PE ratio of 21.98, a 6.62% dividend yield. Volume is 296.18K. Market cap is 1.36 billion US dollars. The, the uh, year range is $32.01 to $44.73. So it did take a little bit of a hit. Day range is about $34. I'm going to show you why I like these guys as a real estate investment trust. So anytime I tell people, you know, I'm going to buy this rate or I like this rate. Again, this is for entertainment purposes. This is not um, for, um, you know, financial advice. You know, I'm not a financial advisor. I have a disclaimer in the description. So, you know, do your dil due diligence. But, you know, this is why I own LTCs. I'm going to explain to you why I like these guys. And I'm going to show you their dividend history and how they're doing as a uh, real estate investment trust. Very strong real estate investment trust that I have in my M1 Finance portfolio. So let's check these guys out real quick. So I'm on their website. They, they are basically a real estate investment trust investing in senior housing and healthcare primary through sale, leasebacks, mortgage financing, joint ventures, construction financing, and preferred equity, bridge, mezzanine, and lending. So here's the thing. These guys are a real estate investment trust. Okay, I will show you their portfolio real quick. But the, here's the thing. They have 176 plus investments, 27 states, 31 operating partners. We need to know the nitty and gritty about these guys. And I'll show you why I was convinced to buy this stock and why I'm long in it and absolutely love this stock to reinvest the dividends and let the uh, dividend reinvestment or the drip uh, kick in. So these guys invest in diverse, high quality portfolio of senior housing and healthcare properties. Our goal is to be the strategic capital partner, lining interest in creative capital solutions, ultimately generating shared success. So they have 179 properties, assisted living and skilled nursing facilities. So I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm a registered nurse and I work on a cardiac step down for, and I cannot tell you the unfortunate uh, situation with people getting sicker. The baby boomers are retiring. There's a rise in diabetes. There's a rise in hypertension. There's a rise in mental health. There's a rise in amputations because of diabetes. They're saying by 2050, just based on some statistics and some projections, one in three is gonna have type two diabetes and one in three is gonna be obese. So here's the thing. That's a problem. People are getting amputations. There's a correlation between diabetes and amputations, healing rates and everything. And there are people that need to be at skilled nursing facilities. And here's the thing. People that have diabetes, they have hypertension, that increases their chances of strokes, which strokes are, you know, epi are an epidemic as well. There's causing people to go to skilled nursing or acute care facilities, as well as assisted living facilities. And there are a lot of people who are retired that should not be at home and they should be at assisted living facilities as well as skilled nursing facilities. So that's why I own this stock and, and you know, I see it firsthand. And, you know, unfortunately people are getting sicker. 
So there's a correlation with this stock and these um, buildings. And again, you, you know, in order for these guys to make money, people have to pay money, you know, to them. You know, people are paying rent or, um, you know, uh, board or room and board, which, you know, goes back to the building or the, the landlord. And beds are filling up. I cannot tell you how many times it is so hard to send people to facilities, skilled nursing or assisted living, because people are so sick out there that we had beds waiting sometimes with some facilities that people referred uh, that wanted to be at. And, you know, they had to wait a few days. So this is going uh, this is going to be exponentially growing. I see this as a serious problem with people being unhealthy and requiring to be in assisted living facilities and people getting sick. Remember, fractures. What about if you get a fracture in the winter? You might need to go to a skilled rehab facility if you fracture a hip or a fracture a femur and stuff. So there's going to be recommendations by physical therapy and occupational therapy to go to skilled nursing facilities. So let's check out their dividend history. So very slowly over time, this dividend, this monthly dividend stock has increased its dividend over time. So 2014, it was 17. 2015, it was 18. 2017, it was 20, uh, 19 cents. So you're seeing a distribution, an annual dividend of 228, and it's how much? 34.42. That's a pretty good deal. It's a 6.2 percent dividend yield. Now the PE ratio is a little high, but I'm going to tell you, you know, these guys have enough cash flow, and they have enough to get beds full so that they can. You know, be a strong, stable stock. Now, again, the healthcare real estate investment trusts are so strong. They're pandemic proof and they're recession proof. And guess what? They were distributing their dividend even during the pandemic when it hit a nosedive. So that's why I own so many shares in my M1 Finance dividend portfolio and why I absolutely love this monthly dividend stock. And I am long in the stock. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. And that next stock is EPR Properties. This is sitting at $50.31. So this is a specialized real estate investment trust. Think about it. Entertainment. Okay, so they're focused on entertainment properties. And they just started, again, They at one point they completely stopped distributing their dividend because of the pandemic. And if you got this at a complete nosedive at $19, $18, kudos to you guys. And how long I did buy a lot of the dip, even when the... Uh, pandemic hit and I had a lot of shares before the pandemic and it, it distributes a 5.9 percent dividend yield market cap is 3.76 billion year range is 2062 to 5607 now I'm going to explain to you why I own this stock and this is a great dividend stock a monthly dividend stock again the di distribution is 25 cents right now so they just came back and said that so maybe they may increase it maybe they you know may decrease it but right now things are looking pretty strong and they resume their dividend so look at this it was it was at 68 70 some dollars so the dip is there it's pretty stagnant it's not jumping up or down and this is why i bought more uh shares of these guys so let's jump to the portfolio of epr properties <laughs> here's the thing about epr i always when i read this real fast it is such a tongue twister so epr properties is a leading experiential real estate investment trust specializing in select and during experiential properties in the real estate industry so they have 357 locations 6.4 billion in total investments 200 plus tenants in 44 states in canada so here's some of the drivers that they said so we focus real estate in which we create value by facilitating our out home out of home leisure and recreation experiences where the consumers choose to spend their discretionary time and money these are properties which make up the social infrastructure of society so look what they got so this is kind of their drivers so create memorable experiences in safe environments, share their experiences, desire to reconnect and congregate. So let me show you their portfolio real quick. Here's their big, now if you notice this right here, they got lodging, okay, attractions, ski, eat and play, theaters, gaming, cultural, fitness and wellness. Theaters, they are a major landlord to AMC theaters. So a lot of these AMC Ape Army or whatever you want to call, you know, those guys, they are really pumping some money in AMC. And guess what? Things are slowly starting to open up. And these 
people, you know, I love going to movie theaters and experiencing movie theaters, you know, the experience at a movie theater versus sitting at my place watching, uh, you know, a Marvel movie and stuff. They, you know, to see the reaction and, and, you know, the crowd and everybody all pumped up, you know, when things happen, that's, that's what I like about the movie theater experience, seeing the movie there, you know, like when, uh, I saw, um, you know, episode nine, you know, when Lando arrived, the whole crowd, you know, the whole theater was just erupting and cheering when the whole fleet arrived. I mean, that's the experience that I like. So, you know, at movie theaters, they have 2% of private schools, 3% early uh, childhood education. And this eat and play, the other thing that they also have are like these golf, like these top golf resorts and everything that they really explain. So they know what they're doing. They actually did some research on you know what people want to look for and i'll show you this real quick so their partner top golf has been a leading eat and play concept in the u.s and credited with revolutionizing the game of golf powered by its combination of entertainment competition food and fun by offering a unique year-round experience top golf provides highly social experiences for families novice and serious golfers and millennials alike over one point or I'm sorry, over 17 million guests in 2018. Their fun, flexible, all-inclusive approach to the sport, connecting with consumers and driving the brand's continued strategic expansion. So this is really interesting. So here's one thing that they looked into research. So Reach shows that 70% of consumers prefer to visit entertainment formats versus typical casual dining for group occasions. From upscale bowling and bocce eateries to retro three gathering spots designed to appeal to socially motivated millennials, our partners create a vibrant destinations that allow con consumers to access wide varieties of entertainment and retail for tenant su success. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Like in the past, you know, dates you know, with people I've dated or met online, you know, these type of things were a lot of fun. Uh, two people I'm actually real life friends with, uh, it, we just weren't feeling it. But, you know, we were even talking about like as a group, you know, a group of friends and stuff. Hey, let's go, you know, do, you know, let's go to Top Golf and stuff. So these are things that, um, you know, are uh, a lot of fun as a group. And, uh, you know, I still hang out with these two people, you know, here and there, if they're in downtown where, where I live and we all catch up and, you know, just crack jokes and stuff. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, it is, it's something to get your mind off sometimes when people have dates or try really serious and stuff, but this is what these guys are about. So let's jump to their, uh, the next dividend stock. I was going to almost say dividend history, but right now they're at 25 cents and hopefully they'll, uh, increase their dividend distributions once things start opening up crossing my fingers but man i'm just going to ride those dividends and just keep on getting it bigger and bigger and if there's a bigger dip maybe i'll buy more so let's jump to the next dividend stock this next stock is horizon technology finance corp this is a business development company and i'm very careful with business development companies this one i own gain i own in maine but the other ones i kind of back off on and I'll actually compare this against uh, Prospect Capital and why it kind of backed off from Prospect Capital. So Horizon Technology Finance Corp, they have a 7% dividend yield, a PE ratio of 28.69. Be a little careful. You start seeing 7.10%. Is this a yield trap? You got to start looking into certain things like that. I'll explain to you why I own this one. So the uh, year range is 1103 to 1795. Again, 7.10% dividend yield. Let's look a little bit more into these guys before um, you know you start look, making conclusions. This is what was the selling point for me in owning this stock. Um, this is a risky stock. Again, business development companies, you have to be extremely careful with when you own these type of stocks. So let's jump to this uh, stock's uh, you know, website and information about this stock. Okay, so here's some information about Horizon. Uh, technology finance. So they're the leading venture lending platform and thoughtfully and creatively provides structured debt and products of two life science and technology companies. Horizon's experienced team of investment and operations professionals has been providing debt capital to some of the most exciting companies for decades. The members of Horizon team have collectively originated and invested more than $5 billion in venture loans to thousands of companies. Since 2004, Horizon has directly originated and invested more than $2 billion in venture loans to more than 250 growing companies. 
So, here's the thing. Ryzen offers growth-oriented loans to finance a variety of business activities. So, loan type, bridge, and special purpose. Here's what they do. Uses cash runaway extension, operations, working capital expansion, research and development, sales and marketing, and acquisition. So here's their sectors. Life science, biotechnology, medical device, drug delivery, genetics, specialty pharmaceuticals, R&D instrumentation. Healthcare, information and services, diagnostics, medical records, digital health, patient management, software. Technology, machine learning and cloud computing and storage, communications and wireless, cybersecurity, data analytics, internet and media, networking, software, software, and other related emerging technologies. And then sustainability, alternative fuels, energy efficient, green building materials, uh, food tech, water technology, and other related sustainability technologies. So this is well diverse. And... Life science and all this stuff, I think this is very exciting with these guys and what they're doing. And let me show you how much revenue they're generating. This is what was a selling point for, for me buying these guys. Let me show you this. So if you look in 2014, this is an annual data in millions of US dollars. You got 31.25, 31.1, 32.984, 25, then you got 31, then you got 43, and then 46. So it is consistently going up in the past few years. If you look from 2017 to 2020, it is increasing. So these guys are doing something right. Now, the one thing you got to be aware of is a total non-operating income expense. It's negative 22.334. The operating income is 43.305. But the gross profit is increasing over time. So I do like that. Now, this is one that still you have to be careful with because you see the the P.E. ratio, the dividend yields about 7%. This is a business development company. So remember, real estate investment trusts and business development companies, 90% of their income goes back to you as investors or else they have to pay a penalty and they're in big trouble. So just remember that with these type of uh, business development companies and real estate investment trusts, money goes back to us. Okay, that's the very interesting thing. I'm going to show you its dividend history, and I'm going to show you how it's doing against Prospect Capital and why I don't like Prospect Capital, and I own these guys instead of Prospect. I want you to be aware it went from $0.11 cents to $0.10, cents, but it's consistently at $0.10, cents and it looks like there may be potential for it to increase its dividend over time. Now, don't quote me on that. Again, that's the board of directors call, but there's an upswing in this monthly dividend stock. There's an increase in revenue and its price per share has gone up a little bit. So there is some confidence with this business development company. I am extremely careful with business development companies. Now this one, I can't, you know, I can't, uh, you know, guarantee anything. Again, this is not financial advice. This is entertainment purposes. But I like that consistent 10 cents. And this is why I just added them to my M1 Finance Dividend Portfolio. I had them on E-Trade. actually sold them on E-Trade. And I'm throwing it on M1 Finance because I, I want those monthly dividends to start kicking in. My goal is to make, you know, $1,000 to $3,000 a month of my monthly dividends and $2,000 to $4,000 a month my quarterly dividends. So that's why I like Horizon uh, Technology Finance stock. Now I'm going to show you how it's done against Prospect Capital. It's going to make you cringe if you bought Prospect a few years ago because its price per share has really decreased and its dividend has decreased. So let's check that out. So if you look since inception, Prospect was in the 12s and then it just started to go down and it's really really down and then it's still maybe slowly getting up pe ratio 3.55 um which is not bad dividend yield 8.76 percent so the year range is 491 to 925 now here's a thing that's kind of a turnoff with these guys in the long run which i'll reveal to you so revenue-wise, it's still around 7.12, let's just say, let's just say in the 700s. But from 2017, 2018, 2019, it, it's here, so-so. But I like dividend stocks that have increased their um, 
dividend. Their gross profit about stagnant. Uh, their you know operating income is not bad. So there's some things that are a little iffy, but I'm going to show you which was the deal breaker for me. Now don't I'm not don't you know I'm not completely going to say no to Prospect Capital, but I'm going to show you its dividend history and why I'm like eh. You know, maybe I'll look at it, keep an eye on it, and see what happens. Um, but if you bought the dip, like kudos to you because you know you can make a profit. You're getting um, a nice dividend, uh, consistent dividend. Hopefully, it'll uh, increase its dividend over time for some of you guys that took a huge loss. So let's check that out. You got eleven cents, eight cents, six cents. So Horizon was. You know, it, it a little bit. I mean, it, it was down, but you got a PE ratio of 3.29, dividend yield to 8.8 percent, annual dividend of 72 cents. Little iffy. I'm honestly a little iffy with these guys. You still get a, a decent amount because they are a business development company. And kudos to you if you bought the dip and you just kept on reinvesting. But I'm just gonna back off for this one right now. Don't you know? I'm not gonna completely. Uh, say I'm against prospect capital. I'm just not a fan of it. And it's just, I, I just don't like it at the moment. And just the way that they have uh, haven't increased their uh, revenue and they're kind of consistent, you know, and stagnant. Well, I wouldn't say cons uh, consistent, but they're just stagnant. So I'm just going to back off a little bit. Maybe in the long run, I could just say, hey, I want to make, you know, X amount of dollars and get my monthly dividend stock income. But right now I'm kind of backing off. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. And I absolutely love this monthly dividend stock, Stag Industrial. So the industrial just pretty much sells the name. It is a monthly dividend stock, a 3.53% dividend yield, PE ratio of 36.95. Uh, the year range was 29.34 to 42.30. I own this one. I'm long in it. I'm going to explain to you why I absolutely love this stock. And I'm going to show you the selling point for me what I really like about Stag. So let's check this these guys out. The so Stag is a real estate investment trust focused on the acquisition and operation of single tenant industrial properties throughout the United States. By targeting this type of property, Stag has developed an investment strategy that helps investors find a powerful balance of income plus growth. So enterprise value, 8.0 billion, 100.1 square feet, 39 states, 501 buildings. So let's look at these guys and see what they're about. So here's just one example. They, I'm just going to use my state. So these appear to be pandemic proof and recession proof. Distribution warehouses. How many times do you need warehouses for things? Manufacturing. Okay, so these, this is what these guys focus on. They're, they're acquiring a ton of these buildings and people need these. I mean, they, I drove by Industrial Parkway in Twinsburg. I'm going to tell you how big that is is a distribution warehouse i actually picked up something from there a long time ago and that is huge and these are things that people need people need you know distribution warehouses for a lot of things so this these guys are going they're just going to go up and up and up they're going to increase their dividend over time which i'm going to reveal to you and look at this since 2013 it was 10 cents 11 cents so it's just jumping up point uh, it's almost at, let's see, 12 cents. It's right at 12 cents. So it's 11 point, it was 11.9. Then it hit 12, it's 12.1. So you see it slowly going up and it's probably going to hit 13 cents eventually, but you see the growth and you see the dividend growth. This is a great dividend growth investing stock because over time it's going to increase its dividend. And again, people have to pay rent. These guys are pandemic proof and recession proof. They are a very strong, diverse, I would say a diversified in their sector as a real estate investment trust. And they're very focused on certain type of things like warehouses that people need. So this is why I absolutely love this uh, stock. I absolutely will be long in it and I'll probably buy more in the future. I want to at least get to 100 shares of Stag, then reinvest the dividends and let it fly from there. Because again, I have a goal to make $1,000, $3,000 a month on my monthly dividends and $2,000 to $4,000 a month on my quarterly dividends. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. So next one is SLG Realty Corp. This is a real estate investment trust that primarily primarily invest in office buildings and shopping centers in New York City. 
So as of December 31st, 2019, the company has owned 43 properties compromising a lot of square feet. So look at that. That's crazy. So let's look into these guys a little bit before, uh, you know, before you start making conclusions. So they have a 5.12% dividend yield. So they only have 43 properties, but what makes these guys special? And we'll check that out. You have to be extremely careful with this one. I, I bought this one. I'll take the risk. You know, people love to live in New York. I don't care how expensive it is. I don't care how much the taxes are. Look at these beautiful buildings that they have in New York. And, you know, I personally would not live in New York just because of the taxes. Uh, but, I mean, have you ever been in New York City? Look at all the stuff that they uh, are a major landlord to. And their acquisitions are very strong. People are going to pay rent. It, it's just the, the building and the atmosphere in New York. People absolutely love that. And look at this. I mean, these are beautiful buildings. I, I, how can you say no to that? And here's the thing about these guys, which I'll reveal to you as well. The revenue has been a little stagnant, okay? But it jumps, it fluctuates a little bit. But again, they are a real estate investment trust. And a lot of people, if you're paying rent and everything, and they start acquiring more buildings, usually okay, usually they increase their dividends. Now, this is a risky one. It, I'm telling you, this is a risky one, but I will I will take the risk, and I did buy that uh, recently and put that on my M1 Finance Dividend Portfolio. What a surprise. I'm actually going to post a video tomorrow revealing my changes on M1 Finance and what I plan on doing. I wonder if this one's on there. So let me show you its dividend history and some things that are really interesting with these guys. They made a gutsy move. And I will reveal another stock that decided to be a monthly dividend stock. They made a gutsy move. They went quarterly to monthly. And 30 cents for with a 5.09% dividend yield, PE ratio of 17.76, annual dividend of 364. And again, the rules of the real estate investment trust, 90% of their earnings and income comes back to us as dividend investors. So that's what I really like about SL uh, Realty uh, stock. I'm going to take the risk. I took the risk. This one's a risky one because it doesn't have a lot of properties. If you look at uh, Stag Industrial Complex, look at how many buildings, you know, they're landlord to a lot of them. EPR properties in these two are the risk ones because you know you know they're small they're focused on certain things i cannot i don't know if this is pandemic proof or recession proof but i'm taking the risk and i do think it's a little overvalued but i'm going to continue to put money in it really hasn't jumped up too much in price per share and it's New York. People like living in New York. New York has a reputation. I don't care, again, how much you're taxed on it, how much, how expensive it is. People love New York. This is something unique about this real estate investment trust, and that's why I own this stock. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. And here we go, the monthly dividend stock, Realty Income. This is a very strong pandemic and recession-proof stock, but I got one after this that's a serious rival, and I'm going to compare the compound and annual growth rate with Realty Income after this. But this is a has a P.E. ratio of 71.88, a dividend yield of 3.98%. This is huge. You want to talk about a huge landlord they how many things they own is like ridiculous six thousand plus they are uh buildings they are a landlord to and i'll go over that and i'll show you their portfolio they're like almost like their own like vnq you know vanguard vnq because they're so diversified uh, i mean it's huge how strong these guys are and the next stock that i'm going to mention they they real tm come they're, they're going to be in a run for their money so let me show you the portfolio realty income real quick. Their monthly dividends are strong shareholder returns, 613 consecutive monthly dividends paid, 15.3 compound and annual uh, total returns since 1994, 6,700 properties under long-term net lease agreements. 
6,700. Would you? It's crazy. 50 states, including Puerto Rico and the United Kingdom, 58 retail and other industries, 630 different clients, 95 consecutive quarterly increases, 4.4% compound annual dividend growth rate since 1994. Beautiful dividend growth stock. Dividend growth investors love this stock because it increases its dividend. And you're going to be like, if you are new to this channel, if you are new to the stock, your jaw is going to drop at their portfolio. I'm going to reveal that to you. So here's their industry diversification. They're in aerospace, apparel stores, automotive collision services, automotive parts, automotive service, automotive tire services, beverages, child care consumer electronics, consumer goods, convenience stores, crafts and novelties, diversified industrial, dollar stores, drug stores, education, electric utilities, entertainment, equipment services, financial services, food processing, general merchandise, government services, grocery stores, health and beauty, health and fitness, health care, home furnishings, home improvement, machinery, office supplies, packaging, paper, restaurants, casual dining, restaurants, quick service, holy cow, I mean telecommunications, that is an extremely well diversified real estate investment trust. And let me show you their top 20 clients, which makes this even more crazy. 7-Eleven, Walgreens, Dollar General, FedEx, Sandsbury's, Dollar Tree, LA Fitness, they have 56 number of leases. So again, pandemic took a little bit of a hit AMC, same thing. Regal Cinemas took a little bit of a hit. Lifetime Fitness, eh, a little bit of a hit. But Walmart, Sam's Club, all these things, Treasury Wine Estate, CVS Pharmacy, Kroger, Fastmart, Circle K, a lot of these are pandemic-proof and recession-proof companies. You know, they're not going to take a blow. So this is what makes Realty Income a pandemic-proof and recession-proof uh, dividend stock and they've increased their dividends and a lot of us love the dip and bought that and then reinvested so that we've got more shares of realty income let me jump to its dividend history look at these increases it, here's just 2018 22 cents 2020 23 cents we're going to be cracking 24 eventually 2021 23.55 so it's consistently increasing its dividend over time. That is beautiful as a monthly dividend stock. Now I'm going to jump, before I jump to the one that I consider a rival, I'm going to explain to you why I don't like AGNC stock real quick. So I used to own this stock and then I got rid of it. It's a real estate investment trust. It's a mortgage back rate, 8.76 dividend yield, a PE ratio of 4.74. Again, kudos to you if you bought the dip. That makes a big difference with uh, being an X factor of buying the stock and being long in it. But, you know, these mortgage back rates you have to be careful with. I'm going to show you its revenue and its dividend history, which make it a huge turnoff for me. So it was in millions of U.S. dollars. Really hasn't jumped up. 2019 it did jump up and it took a dive in 2020. But it just really hasn't impressed me that much. I did buy it. I was a sucker for it. And then I sold it, but this is what I really didn't like with these guys as a dividend stock. Their decrease in price per share over time, which I'll go over, and then I'll show you its dividend history real quick. So it started off at 19, let's just say 19 in 2008, went up, took a, went up to 34, and then it's just been down. Just has not recovered. It's slow. Nah. And here's a quarterly financials, not good. It's just, I know the earnings calls in the second quarter did okay, but not yet for me, not yet to convince me to buy it. Um, you know, I hope it does well. You know, I don't, it, it's just not enough to convince me to buy it. I mean, to you guys that bought the dip like way down here, kudos to you at 951. Of course, I would hold on to it and just reinvest and just pocket that money and just love you know getting it bigger and bigger and some people may buy you know the the dip and, and then sell it when it's high but let me show you its dividend history it's like eh. but sometimes even with a low pe ratio those are red flags so you got 20 cents was it 20 cents monthly dividend stock 18 16 12 never recovered 
even during 2019, it was still at 12. Dividend yield at 8.85% annualized dividend of 144. It's just not attractive enough for me to say, I love this stock. I want this stock. Um, you know, Horizon, you know, only does 10 and it's 16. Okay. Maybe you can give, uh, it's, it's still, I just don't feel confident in AGNC, but I want to jump to the last dividend stock. I've saved the best for last huge rival with, uh, I would consider realty income, strong portfolio, almost the same type of portfolio as realty income. And it has a better, uh, compound and annual growth rate, which I'm going to show you versus, oh, it's really interesting. Let's check this stock out. And that stock is Agree Realty Corporation. So in 2021, the board of directors late basically said, we're going to be a monthly dividend stock. So the start of 2021, they were a, they converted from a quarterly dividend stock to a monthly dividend stock. They have a PE ratio of 45.29 to 3.53% dividend yield. And they're actually more expensive than O right now, which is very interesting. The year range was 61.27 to 75.95. This is what makes these guys really interesting as a stock. And I'm going to show you uh, their website and their portfolio. Very interesting. Almost a, the same replica as O, which make these guys uh, pandemic proof and recession proof if you look at their overall portfolio. So for nearly 50 years, Agree has been a preferred development partner for industry-leading retailers. We provide ourselves on our ability to undertake all aspects of our development process, creating and executing on new and relocation opportunities for our retail partners. Retail real estate executives rely on our decades of experience, multi-billion dollar balance sheet, and proven ability to deliver on time and budget. So let's look at that. So they like... They look at site identif identification and acquisition, market feasibility and saturation evaluations, due diligence and entitlement administration, lease negotiation and asset management, design permitting and construction. What are their properties about? So now they're not as big as realty income, but look at the type of things that they own. And I'm sorry, I wouldn't say own, but they're a landlord for. So Aaron's Rents, Academy Sports, Advanced Auto Parts. So cars, just like O, Advanced Auto Parts. Look at all these Advanced Auto Parts that they own. Think people need fixes on cars? Alabama Motorist Association, Aldi. How many people need Aldi? Pretty popular uh, company, Amazon Fresh, AMC, okay, Applebee's, Ashley Furniture, Aspen Dental. How many times do people need their teeth clean? at home at&t some buildings so people need their phones athletico auto motoring group auto zone how many people need to go to auto zone to get parts in their car i can tell you if i need a new light uh changed i go to auto zone look at all these buildings they own i mean my gosh of auto zone i'm just scrolling down now that's just some of them some of the things that they own and look at this Here's Best Buy. People go to Best Buy. People go to Big Lots, Billboard, Bridgestone, Firestone, Burger King. How many times do people go to fast food? Burlington. So these are just some things. Sunbelt Rentals. So look at their portfolio. Stop and Shop. Starbucks. Look at how many Starbucks buildings they have. Staples. People go to Staples. Specs. Sonic. Skechers. So they're well diversified. Extremely well diversified. And I'm going to show you their compound and annual growth rate. I'm going to show you their dividend history. And I'm going to compare its compound and annual growth rate with realty income because it's way smaller. But something about these guys is very special. And I'll show it to you. Right here, you can see when the board of directors said we are going to be a monthly dividend stock. So look at this growth. Look at this dividend growth. 52, 54, 55, 57, 58, 60, 62 splits. 21, let's go on 21.7, maybe eventually 22. Dividend yield of 3.51%, PE ratio of 45.2, $73.68, annualized dividend of $2.60. Now this is when things get very interesting, and I'm going to show you guys this, and, you're, and your jaw is probably going to drop. And this is what sold me with Agree Realty Corporation. I never even heard of these guys until I just did a random Google search and I found these guys in monthly dividend stock and that the board of directors made the call. 
that we're going to be a monthly dividend stock. And that was such a huge strategic move because I'm going to tell you, I never heard of these guys before they became a monthly dividend stock. Let's check out their compound and annual growth rate. Crazy. Check this out. So look at this. The dividend per share growth is rated as an A, 6.11%. Dividend growth rate is 15.77. Dividend per share growth, FY1 to FY3, compounded annual growth rate, 3.27%. Dividend growth rate in three years, compounded annual growth rate, 9.12%. Five years, 7.64. 10 years, 4.06. Revenue growth, 31.32. Let's look at realty income now. So dividend growth rate, 1.77%. It's rated as a B. Dividend growth per share, FY1, 2.27. Dividend per share growth, FY1 to FY3, compounded annual growth rate, 1.72%. Dividend growth rate in three years, 2.73%. Dividend growth rate in five years, 3.72%. Dividend growth rate in 10, uh, 10 years, 4.98%. Revenue growth, 12.13%. If you compare both of those numbers, you should probably go back and just compare both of these. You got A with Agree Realty Corporation and B with O. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So I wanted to point that out to you guys. These are my monthly dividend stocks that I own. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I cannot tell you how many breaks I had to take taking a sip of water right here and like dealing with these tongue twisters and everything. Um, you guys have been fantastic with this channel. I hope you really enjoyed this. Smash that like button. I plan on posting a video tomorrow. I made sure to get my homework out of the way and everything to post this video. So please, if you are new, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. You got to hit that bell because I try to pump at least three to five videos a week even being busy in graduate school, and uh, it actually keeps my sanity in graduate school. So you guys take care and have a good one.